please ignore all of the dishes in the sink. Weekends are not for doing dishes. Weekends are for making projects. Hello. I have a non-sewing project to do, hence the kitchen. Um, and I've been putting it off for a little bit, but I don't want to put it off anymore because it is that lovely thing, the best kind of projects, a useful project that I actually want to make so that I can then benefit from it being made. Logic. So I'm pretty prone to dry skin and it's not nearly as bad here in California as it was in New York. And ironically, the place where it's the worst is Florida. Story time for dry skin. Yeah, because I have a story about everything. One of the times that I was living in Florida, I was working for Disney World and I was like the... Basically, I took care of a stock room, so I had to like unload trucks and merchandise and stuff. But a lot of it was pulling all of this merchandise back and forth from the loading dock all the way up to our stock room, which was quite a long walk. And you're using, you know, like the dolly carts. So it was always my right hand wrapped around this metal handle and as we got into winter, which like winter in Florida isn't bad and Florida's very humid, so you think this wouldn't be a problem, but it was like it was so humid in Florida that it zapped all of the liquid out of my body somehow. So as we moved into winter, right here on my hand started getting more and more dry, I guess just from being wrapped around a metal bar all the day long, all the time. Um, and eventually it got so bad that legit like this cracked all the way down right here, which like, if anything has ever happened to this part of your hand, you know how incredibly painful that is. It was horribly unpleasant. I was trying to retrain myself to pull like this instead of like this, and it was just like, my body couldn't get used to it. So painful, I finally got a bottle of lotion and put it in my car, because I couldn't like use lotion throughout the day. You can't leave greasy handprints on everything you're touching. So on the way to work and on the way home from work, I would literally just glob like a huge glob of lotion right here on my hand and then like drive without using that section of my hand. And I could see it soak in. It would like shook insane. It did finally heal, um, but it took a lot of time, a lot of lotion, and a lot of trying to pull in a little C-grip instead of a C-grip. Those are both C-grips. A U-grip? What is pulling like this? I don't know, but it's really uncomfortable for me. Anyway, that is my dry skin story that no one asked for. That's like the worst thing that's ever happened to me when it comes to dry skin. Um, but normally in the winter, I just get a little dry. But the thing is, I don't like using lotion for many reasons because, you know, you always get too big of a glob and then you have all this excess and you have to like sit there and rub it in and then wait for it to dry. And even when it's like rubbed in, it's still like your hands are greasy and you don't want to touch anything for a while after that. And it's just like, ugh. I'm not a huge fan. A while ago, somewhere, I don't know, probably YouTube, maybe Instagram, I saw something about like homemade lotion bars. So apparently you can make these yourself. They dry and harden in room temperature and so they'll just melt with the heat of your body when you touch it. And it, so it just like melts off a layer onto whatever part of your body you put it on. That weirdly sounded grosser than it needed to be. So I thought maybe I'll like those more than liquid lotion. So why not give them a try? It's not that hard. So I guess we could consider this a tutorial, assuming everything turns out okay. And like, I don't massively mess it up somehow. Basically it's three main ingredients, either coconut oil or sweet almond oil. You also need either shea butter or cocoa butter. Um, Good grief. What even is that? Anyway, I went with shea butter because cocoa butter has a very distinctive chocolate smell and I didn't want my flavors to smell like chocolate. And then you also need beeswax. 
no other option for that. You just need beeswax. Yeah, so basically it's a one to one to one ratio. I'm assuming by weight, I got a pound of all three. I don't think I should make the full pound right now. I don't think that would be a wise idea at all, but I might do half a pound of each because why not? And then the only other thing you need is like your flavors, your scents, I guess also food coloring, not food coloring, the dye that's specifically made for like lotion, soap, stuff like that. Don't put food coloring in this. It will come off on your skin. I'm not gonna bother putting colors in it because I don't care. I'm gonna use my best sauce pot. And by best, I mean the one that has a dent in the side because my husband dropped it on the floor. In all fairness, he was more upset about that than I was. I don't care. A pot is a pot, even with a dent, it still works. This lovely little dent right here. Actually, the lid doesn't sit on it anymore, so that can be annoying sometimes, but such is life. I grew up in a giant household. We broke stuff so often, like at least once a week a dish got broken. It's just how life went. I am just gonna use a kitchen scale to measure out each ingredient so it's equal. And I'm gonna use a cheap ass knife that we don't like, just in case getting wax all over a knife ruins it. It does not really smell good. It doesn't smell bad. It just smells very natural, I guess. I'm gonna like shave it off in chunks. Oh God. Okay, yeah, cause it's not easy to cut. I think I need a saw. Here we go. Welcome to the portion of the video I like to call Charlie does unsafe things. <sighs> Cause Charlie has no fear of death. Unlike regular humans. Maybe this knife is just really bad. No, I think this is just not easy to cut through. Oh my God. Beeswax, who knew? Ready? That did absolutely nothing. Stabbed the cutting board. Having now scored that a lot more, let's try this again. Still a hard no. If anyone watching this has any experience cutting up beeswax, please do let me know, just in case I ever decide to do this again. Shea butter, you better be a lot easier to cut up than this. Ooh, ooh. Dun, 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 dun. <sighs> okay. Two hundred and four grams. Two hundred and three. You want to change your mind again? Can I make you an even two hundred? We're going two hundred. What is shea butter? Heat sealed in a mylar food grade bag to seal in all its healing properties. Well, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, it smells a little better. It is softer. Oh, ooh. <laughs> nice after the last thing. <laughs> 202 grams. Am I good or what? Let me just take off a little, a little chip here. Now it's exactly 200. Oh, now my hands are all shea buttery. That's not gonna work. I don't have the energy for this. Okay, let's try this again. Grand. All right, so I need 200 grams of this. Oh, best thing yet, look at that. Take a look at that beautiful stuff. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So I was originally just gonna put these in like muffin tins or something, but I happened to recently buy some really cheap on sale molds because they were really cheap and on sale. So the only other thing I need is my add-ins and flavors. Since I always wanna call them flavors, but 
their scents. Let us adjourn to the oil's drawer. Welcome to the oil drawer. Also apparently batteries. Yeah, so I have a bunch of oils for some reason. Um, well, I know the reason, I bought a ton of them. I rarely use them, even though we have a lovely oil dispenser right there. I don't have lavender anymore because that is the one oil I do use and then I run out and then I don't want to order more because it's the only one I need. And like, why put in an order for one little bottle of oil? You doing shakies? Hmm. <laughs> so I have oregano and I have an oregano plant outside. So that could be interesting. I'm not sure that's what I want to smell like, but it is interesting at least. I have peppermint. My peppermint plant died outside randomly for some reason, but I still have a spearmint and a regular mint plant. So I could add like a little leaf on the top and that would be cute. Plus peppermint is always a great light smell to like inhale and make you wake up and clear out your sinuses. And then I have Siberian fir and cedar wood. <sighs> I love the smell of cedar. It's so good, but it's a little strong. Ooh, Siberian fir is like straight up Christmas. I wonder if Siberian fir and peppermint would mix well. No. Um, so I've got lime, lemon, grapefruit, tangerine, clementine, kumquat, and red mandarin, as well as wild orange and citrus bliss. What if I just put like a drop of every single one of those in? Citrus explosion. Okay, so I got some, I think it's spearmint from the garden, as well as a little oregano and some rosemary. So I think I'm definitely gonna do peppermint ones, possibly over here in these. I was thinking about doing the rosemary with one of the citrus flavors. And then maybe I'll do the oregano, cause that's kind of an experimental one. I don't want too many of them. So maybe I'll do them in here with just a little bit and I can put the little leaves kind of around the top and then, what else was I doing? Siberian fur should probably just be on its own because like that is a strong scent. I love like lemon and rosemary, lime and rosemary go great together. Maybe I'll just do lemon and rosemary though. So I think what I'll actually do is dice up the rosemary really tiny and mix it in. Okay, I think everything is prepped. So I'm gonna start heating. Good sense is telling me that I should not heat this on high but our stove takes forever to heat up if it's not on high. So I'm gonna start on high and then turn it down or start on high and then forget to turn it down, which is more commonly what I do. Okay, so what I have just learned is that that melted pretty darn fast. That's what we got. It's a yellow complete liquid. I think I'm gonna pour one at a time, mix it and pour it. That way I can kind of keep putting this back on the stove because I think otherwise this might start to harden. I'm gonna start with the peppermint because you gotta start somewhere. Pray for me. that should be enough. How pepperminty do I want this to be? She says as she pours uncontrollably. <coughs> okay. I'm gonna stop there on the scent. <coughs> that may be uh, way too much. My little leaves do not stay. The part of the leaves that stayed above the liquid turned brown instantly. 
That's fascinating. Ooh. All right, that's one done. Um, the cleanup for this is gonna be interesting because I'm not sure the proper way to wash all this stuff. But why worry about that right now? This one is going to be the lemon and rosemary. There is definitely like a strong smell to the ingredients themselves. And it's not, again, it's not like a bad smell, but it's not necessarily good. So I feel like the, the oils you put in here are having to cover that up, which is why I'm putting so much. I also don't mind strong smells as long as they're smells that I like. See, that I can barely smell at all. It's very subtle. Okay, we're committing to that. Oh yeah, look at that, okay. That solidified super fast. I was gonna come back to this in the morning to finish this video, but I might be able to just finish it in like five minutes. Okay, be good to me. Oh, these are gonna be cute. Okay, and I don't wanna do a lot here. I kind of just want like little discs. Go down little leaves. Overall, like that was a really easy process. They're drying super fast. I'm gonna leave them for, psh, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes and then come back and pop them on out. In the meantime, I have to figure out how to wash all of the stuff I used. I feel like I can just stick them in the dishwasher I also feel like that might be a mistake. Literally these things just pop out. Ha! Yeah, okay, it definitely melts on contact with the skin. Not like melt melts, like not making a hole in it, but you can see that the outside layer becomes oily when I touch it. In order to clean everything that I used, because ultimately what I was concerned about is the beeswax in here, the shea butter and the coconut oil are just that. They're butter and oil, they're massive fats. So like, they're not fun to clean, but it's no different than if you're cooking with it. The beeswax, I was afraid could clog the drain. So I just went in with a paper towel and wiped out as much as I could from every dish that I used, from the spoons, everything. Um, and then threw all of them in the dishwasher except the saucepan and I cleaned that. It, it took a few <laughs> tries, a lot of soap and some very hot water, basically like you're cleaning a really greasy, greasy pan, um, but it did eventually get clean. So the only thing I'm still unsure about is this knife because it pretty much only has beeswax on it. It doesn't have the mix like was in everything else and it's not melted. So it's kind of fused on there. And I don't know if I care enough about this knife to spend like an hour for trying to figure out how to clean it. Ultimately, I think I would boil water and then dip it in the boiled water until it melts off. But again, do I care that much? Ta-da! Yeah, taking these out is very satisfying. <laughs> okay, these are the peppermint. Look at that. Oh yes. Okay. I have a bowl of stuff that kind of looks like it's white chocolate, but is not. Look at me having another day project. Not even a day, that was like two hours. I like some fast projects. I will say it has a greasier feel than most lotions do though. There's really nothing watering it down here. Like it's three fatty waxy materials put together and that's it. Four technically, because essential oils are still oil. All in all, I would say um, fun project, fun experiment. Again, great little gift idea. These are super cute and so fast and popping them out of the molds was very satisfying and a highlight to the end of my day. So thanks very much for watching. Go make yourself some lotion bars and um, don't inhale as much peppermint oil as I did. Okay, bye.